Lab 3 is on linear congruences and the Chinese remainder theorem problems in Mathematica. For this assignment, I didn't create a Mathematica notebook for you, so you're going to create your own. So open up Mathematica and tell it you want to do a new notebook, and you'll see something like this. The next thing you might decide to do is to change the style sheet just so it doesn't look quite so boring. This is optional. You can be boring if you want to, but I choose not to. So I'm going to go to Format and Style Sheet. And Style Sheet Chooser. And I'm going to choose this one. So the first command that you need to use is Reduce. And that'll help you solve linear congruences. So here's how it goes. I might want to solve the linear congruence 3x congruent to 5 mod 7. So I'll say reduce and then square bracket and then I'm going to type 3x and for congruence I'm going to do equals equals 5 comma and then I'm going to say modulus m o d u l u s we could have chosen it there make sure your M is capitalized and then we want an arrow and the way you can type your arrow is to type the dash or the negative sign and then the greater than sign and then when you press a spacebar it will change those two symbols into an arrow for you and the modulus is going to be 7 here and then I'm going to close off my square bracket and Shift Enter to execute the cell, and the solution is 4 here, x equals 4. Now, we saw some instances where there were more than one solution to a linear congruence, so I want to show you how that works. This is problem D from the project last week, and if I go to Reduce, and then it was 3x congruent to 6, so it's 3x equals equals 6, and the modulus was 9, I think. Now it tells me x is 2 plus 3 times c1. Think of c1 as n. It's 2 plus 3n, where n can be any integer value. And the different solutions, mod 9, would be 2 and 2 plus 3, or 5, and 5 plus 3, or 8. After that, if you add 3 on again, you'll get to 11, which is the same thing as 2. So there are three solutions, and remember we talked about the theorem since the greatest common divisor between the x coefficient and the mod were th was 3, and it divided evenly into c to the constant, we'd expect three solutions. So if you have a problem like this, you want to make sure that you tell me the three solutions. And notice it's even prompt prompting me, do I want to convert this to text? And the answer is yes. So the three solutions are 2, 5 and 8 modulo 9. And I would expect you to write the solutions out like that for me. Okay, so let's go on. If we want to solve a Chinese remainder theorem problem, we're going to make an input cell and it's Chinese remainder and it even prompts us Right, we could choose that. And then square bracket. And then you want the curly braces for sets. The first thing you're going to put in are the remainders, the A1, the A2, and the A3, those the first column of boxes I had to do. And we're going to look at remainders of 0, 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then you want set brackets and you want the, the mods that go along with those equations. So I'm going to put f um, 4, 9, and 17 in here for my mods. And I will execute that and I get 172. So this is solving the system of equations 
x is congruent to 0, mod 4, x is congruent to 1, mod 9, and x is congruent to 2, mod 17. So when I take 172 and I divide by 4, the remainder is 0. That's good. If I take 172 and divide by 9, the remainder is 1, because 9 goes evenly into 171. And if I divide 172 by 17, well, 17 goes into 170, so the remainder is 2. You could also use Mathematica to check to make sure those equations were correct. And in Mathematica, what we'd like to do is take 172 and calculate it what it is with those three mods. So 4, 9, and 17. And I see the remainders that we started with. So 172 is 0 mod 4, it's 1 mod 9, and it's 2 mod 17, which is exactly what we wanted. The last thing I want to show you how to do is to find modular inverses in Mathematica. So we're going to use the command power mod, which just as it sounds, takes something and raises it to a power for a given mod. We're going to take 7 and raise it to the power 2, mod 11, first of all. and we'll execute that cell. And 7 squared is 49. Mod 11 would be 5 because the remainder is 5. Now if we want to find the inverse of a number for a given mod, we'll you choose the power to be negative 1. So now if I do power mod 7 to the negative 1 power mod 11, and execute that. We'll see the answer of 8 because 7 times 8 is 56 and 56 mod 11 is 1 which is exactly what we want. 7 and 8 are inverses because they multiply together to get 1. The last thing you're going to do is put your name in. So I'm putting a cell in at the top of the document and typing my name in. And notice once again, Mathematica doesn't recognize what we're typing. So it asks, do we want to convert to text? And yes, we're going to do that. So it's not an input cell. You could also choose the square bracket on the right-hand side and then right-click and choose style and if I did section for example it's going to change that to a bigger font either way is good now save this notebook and this would be what you would upload to Noodle after of course you've answered all the questions in the lab have a great day